Milo, you chosen. Fuck it up when you was right open. I'm just supposing that you bring me to me and dress me on me. Hey, what's up, you guys? So today I'm gonna be talking about binding, um, chest binding, and I guess ways to do that. Um, what's wrong with chest binding? <laughs> and Milo, please get your bum out of my face, baby. Milo, please put your bum out of my face, baby. So today we're gonna be talking about chest binding um, and different ways that you can bind, as well as what is um, safe binding and safe binding practices. So. Um, Today, I'm gonna to be talking about chest binding and why people bind. Um, a lot of people will bind because it alleviates dysphoria. Some people aren't comfortable with their uh, breast tissue, uh, so they'll bind. And that's exactly what I did, and I did that excessively for over six years. Um, I don't recommend binding longer than four hours at a time, eight hours at a time even is quite excessive. I say six is about the sweet spot. Um, and the reason why I say that is because you can begin to see this deformities come so your ribs will, will come to deform so your ribs will start to dis deform and mold out of shape um because of the excessive pressure uh and a lot of people will wear their binders overnight i was one of those people who'd wear my binder all the time because i just i couldn't stand having as large of a chest as i did um but that again like it restricts circulation um, it can also inhibit your breathing. So what can happen is you can puncture your lungs um, and then you suffocate in, in your sleep and you have no idea that that happened. Um, so, so safe binding practices would be to use an actual proper binder. So a lot of places will say that you can bind with KT tape, you can bind with tension bandages. Please don't do that. Um, binding with tension bandages and binding with KT tape is extremely unsafe um, and you will hurt yourself. The best thing to do is to go and get yourself a binder that's made for um, hypoglyce. I don't know. I don't remember what it's called, but it's for men with excessive breast tissue. So if you have excessive breast tissue and you need that suppressed, get yourself a binder. You can get that from underworks.com. You can also go to GC2B and get one. These places are not sponsoring me, by the way. It's just, these are where I got my binders from. So um, I could tell you from firsthand that the tri-top binder from Underworks works perfectly. And it has a beautiful mesh at the back. I don't have any of my binders because I gave them all away when I got top surgery. Um, but we'll talk about top surgery in another video. We'll talk about top surgery in a different video. Um, but yeah, I hope that answers all your questions with binding, um, where you should put your binder on, how you should put your binder on, how you should position your chest. So all of that is up to you and what makes you feel most comfortable. So when I had the tri-top binder, it came across kind of like a sports bra, like this. So what you do, what I did was when I put on my binder, I then pressed down my chest and pushed it to the side. That way it kind of looked like pecs. Um, I don't know if that'll help you. Uh, but if it does, drop a comment below and let me know if it did. Um, this is a short video today, so I recorded all of it in one session. I'm not going to really edit this one. I just wanted to post this one, put this one up, um, because I had a lot of questions about binding. And I really, 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 really want to make sure that you have the information um, available and on hand. So please, please, please stop using KT tape. Stop using tension bandages. Do not use anything that is not made to specifically bind your chest, because this will happen to you. Look at my ribs. My ribs dip in right here, and every time I cough too hard, it pokes me. So please be careful when you're binding. Please don't bind for excessive periods of time. I understand that it's very, very, very dysphoric to not have your binder on, but if you can even like try to find a way of staying in your room, staying, keeping to yourself, wearing bigger hoodies, you know what I mean? And just making sure that you're not binding all the time, all the time, all the time, okay? Um, another thing you can use is a surgical binder. I don't recommend these because um, they don't stay on too, too, like, too well, um, but they do have heavy Velcro, so they're great, um, but they kind of slide, I found, and they're kind of bulky, but you can use them if, if you know, and then they're great because then when you go get top surgery, you don't have to buy a surgical binder, and more times they'll just give you one anyway. So yeah, I hope that answered any questions. If you do have any questions, please 
drop them in the messages uh, or in the comments below and let me know what's going on. Let me know um, if you have any questions about binding, if you have any questions about where to get a binder, um, binder care, binder use, all of that. Drop it in the comments and then I will um, help you with that. So I wouldn't recommend drying your binders in a, in a regular dryer, like washer dryer, because it'll shrink. And then in your head, you're like, ooh, yeah, like I want this to shrink so you know I get the... No, if it shrinks, it's gonna become, hmm, frayed at the ends. So like, it'll kind of like do that by the ends. So you'll have like jaggeds here and you won't like that. So leave it to air dry um, and yeah. That's all I gotta say. I really ain't got much else to say other than be safe, don't use KT tape, and don't use tension bandages. Go to underworks.com, get yourself a tri top binder. Go to gc2b.com, get yourself a tri top binder. Okay, stop using these shits that are not made for binding. All right, I love y'all. Peace.